Okay, welcome to my channel. This is Jack Everett, and I want to show you how to complete Unto the End in Greybeard mode safely and easily. My goal in showing you what to do here is not to prove anything. This is not to show you how to play the game in the most challenging way possible. It's just to show you how to get through Greybeard mode the easiest way possible, actually. The easiest and safest way possible. And I'm just playing the game normally. I don't have combat slowed down or anything like that. This is just the regular base game, base difficulty of the game. And we're going to get through this game, and you're going to see that this is very doable. And that's one thing I want to do for you. I want to show you that this game is very doable. It's not as daunting as it might seem. The idea of making it through the game with one life is not nearly as daunting as it might seem. Like, there are a few par hard parts where I may die on and have to start over, but I'm just going to, I'm only going to show the version, the playthrough where I actually make it through, so hopefully this is the one. I don't know if it will be. The beginning of the game here, this is very easy, obviously. We just walk to the right, and that's it. There's no, no challenge yet. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding around. Of course there's no challenge yet, but... The challenge will shortly arrive, and I'm going to show you how to make it through every section of the game as easy as possible, and I'm going to explain which sections are the hardest, so that you kind of understand that you may need to get frustrated in those parts. Adjust my volume real quick, actually. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is uh, light your torch. I don't know why I put my sword away. Just light your torch first thing, and then get used to the idea of just putting your sword away. Having your sword put away is just always a good idea. Your character will move faster, and like if you're doing graybeard mode, and you have to keep trying over and over again. You know, you do want to move as fast as possible. So the first thing is just jump down here and then start picking up items. I'm going to gather items that are along the path. I'm not going to go out of my way in a lot of areas to pick up items because we'll get the items that we need and you'll kind of find that you don't really need a lot of extra items in this playthrough because we're going to be avoiding most combat. Okay, so the first challenge that we have is going to be this trap up ahead. And this trap will not kill you. So if you get hit by it, you're actually going to be fine in a Greybeard mode playthrough. But what you want to do is, as soon as you hear the noise, just roll. And that's it. Actually, you know what? Roll right before. Roll right after you get past that rock. And that's it. That's how you get past that first one. But that one will not kill you. It'll just smack you in the face and you'll be fine. So even if you do get hit by it in Greybeard mode, you'll be fine. So this next part, you have two options here. You can just kill this guy or you can give him the herbs. It makes no difference in Greybeard mode because you get the same ending in Greybeard mode no matter how you play the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill him just because it's faster. You don't have to wait as long for the guy to nod his freaking head and stuff. So, And also, there's unless you want to craft armor, there's no reason to stop at any of the bonfires in Greybeard mode because we are going to grab the meditation stone so we don't need to really prevent bleeding or anything like that we are going to be grabbing a few items that help us along the way actually to be honest I don't really like killing that guy but I wanted to kill it to see if it actually affects anything because like, I don't think it will actually affect anything I want to talk about this guy though you grab leather from him did you just skin that guy? <laughs> It's actually kind of sickening when I think about it. But this part of the game is obviously very easy. So there's really only, I would consider, one really tough fight that you have to deal with in this game. The rest of the game is very doable. It's just a matter of practice and not making mistakes. Because like, you can just make simple mistakes, like accidentally miss a jump and then fall off a cliff and die. Like You can make mistakes like that. There's a few combat situations where you can screw up, but for the most part... It's pretty straightforward, and you'll find that all the difficult combat is in the beginning of the game. Everything at the end of the game you can skip. So even though the later combat fights are difficult, um, you can skip them all. Okay, so this coming up is actually a real challenge here. So as soon as you fall off, just roll once to the left, and that's it. Do not roll twice, otherwise you'll smack your head into that wall over there. 
and you don't you don't really want to smack your head into the wall there. Now obviously right here is a part where you could just screw up and miss this jump. So just be careful about the jumps because like if you do fail in Greybeard mode, you really want to fail during combat, not during platforming, because it's like the platforming you should have mastered. Okay, so the first fight is, uh, I think the first fight's coming up, and the first fight's really easy. This guy doesn't block, so you just hit him three times and that's it. One, two, three. Fight's over, you can sheath your sword and move on. That's it. And always, you just want to keep your swords sheathed as much as possible, just so that you'll both move faster, and uh, it'll also prevent certain enemies from attacking you. So here, we're just making our way down, and that's it. Just making our way down. And I'm not going to go off the beaten path. I know there is something to the left, but we're not going to go there. And I think you can just make this jump. Okay, so here, you don't have to go this way, but it will get us the meditate or not the meditation stone, but the light stone. Or is it the meditation stone? But either way, you don't have to do it. As soon as you hear a noise, though, as soon as you hear a noise, you need to dodge, otherwise you're going to be dead, okay? So you hear the noise, you roll, otherwise you're dead. That one will kill you, okay? You will not survive that. And then I think we have to do a fight here, but this again, these guys, it just takes three hits and that's it. One, two, three. He doesn't, he won't block, okay? He won't block that. Just three fights and that's it. And then the item that we actually want is a secret item. So when we get to the edge here, we'll grab all these items, but... The item we actually want is a secret item, so you just have to jump up and then go to the left. And then we will get this item, which is the meditation bead. Now the meditation bead, if you play really well, you'll never need it. The meditation bead is just useful because it, it's a hill. It's a hill that you can use whenever you want. Okay, so you actually, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to pick up the sticks next to it. But basically, um, if you do find yourself bleeding out, you can use the meditation bead. So it does make the graybeard mode slightly easier, but you will find that you just don't need it. Now for this cliff, just walk to the right. You don't have to jump or anything and he'll he'll line up perfectly. Okay, and then we can just go down here. And like so far everything's really easy. Now we do want to go to the left here, and I'll show you why. Now the reason why, and I don't know if you need to break these things or not, but here we're gonna get the light stone. It's just gonna make it easier to get past the trolls. Now the trolls you can get past without getting this item, but using this item certainly makes it a lot easier. So these guys, basically, they'll actually switch your items. Like, whatever you give them, they'll give you something different. But if you give them herbs, they will give you the light stone. And you have to have your short sword sheath for him to do this. Otherwise, he'll be too afraid to approach you. The light stone is just going to make it incredibly easy to pass the trolls. Okay? Now, if you give these guys other items, they'll like switch it. They'll switch sticks for bones, they'll switch bones for leather, etc. So you can get whatever item you want. And I don't know if it actually stacks up and increases the amount of items you have, but yeah, I mean, uh, we, we don't really need anything for this playthrough. So now we're just going to make our way to the right. And then I do think that there's a guy to the right right now that we are going to have to fight. He's going to be another easy one where it's just three hits and then it's over. Well, he ran away, but when we do get to him. He's just your standard three hit guy. One, two, three. Fight's over. That's it. Sheath our sword, grab whatever's on his body, some herbs, and move on. Now, I absolutely love this game. This guy, you have to, you, you'll, you'll need to do some skills here. So that guy you have to fight, okay? You cannot run past that guy because there's a key, there's a door with a key afterwards and you can't get past it if that guy's chasing after you. And you'll find that in the beginning of the game, you have to fight everybody. But 
in the second half of the game, you don't have to fight anyone at all. Like, no one. You have to, you don't have to fight anything. But that guy you have to fight, and you're going to need to learn skills from it. You do need to learn how to block and uh, attack when you fight that guy. Otherwise, you're simply not going to make it. Okay, so this part has a little bit of trickery to it. But I will explain how to do it. So on this first part, when you jump across, you need to roll immediately and then just wait. Okay? So we'll get there. Roll. That, if you don't roll, or at least get out of the way, that rock right here will hit you and it will kill you. And if you go too far, this rock right here will kill you. Now to the next one, just jump over. And then you just need to move forward a little bit and then just wait. And then once that rock falls, you can continue onward. Okay? Otherwise, you're going to get killed by those. But that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so we're going to have to fight this guy. It's the same deal, okay? Like, you're going to have to use some skills, so... Oh, I forgot. There's two of them. Just kill this guy first. He takes three hits, and that's it. So, be a little careful here. I'm playing pretty sloppy, but we should be fine. I need to get my sword back, though, unfortunately. Okay. So, this guy, you're going to have to block. See, we took a little bit of bleeding there, but we have this meditation beat. It's just going to cure us. So, like I said, we're not trying to prove anything in this playthrough. We're just trying to make it through it. I actually fought that fight really, really badly. That, that was really sloppy because I forgot about the guy that comes behind you. But once again, that's it. Like, the guys with weapons, you have to block and learn how to fight them. The guy without weapons, it's just three hits and then the fight's over. So now we just have a little bit of platforming to do. But yeah, this is a very fun game. It's a very satisfying game. I really enjoy this game a lot. And I played through it four times before I got Greybeard mode for the first time. And then uh, I, got, I actually got Greybeard mode the first time I actually tried it for reals. So there's a bonfire to the left. But we don't really need to grab it, but we are going to grab some of the items nearby it just because, like, it's helpful to have as many items as possible. And also, like, we could have just not used the meditation bead there, and we would have been able to heal right here anyway. So, but I actually just wanted to see if there was any more items over here. Okay, I shouldn't have put the sword away before lighting the torch. But always just have your torch out and put your sword away. That's how you play this game. Or, I mean, when you want to do it like this. When you want to do Greybeard mode. I think there was an item back there I could have grabbed, but it doesn't matter that much. Okay, so this part... Just go ahead and jump off the edge there, or just fall off. But make sure you don't fall too far to the right, otherwise you're going to be a dead man. To the left, there's just going to be some items that we can grab. And of course, we hear the troll for the first time. It's very scary sounding, and I think that's all that's over here, yeah. But then the true way is to the right. So just be careful on the platforming here. Like, you don't want to end up falling off the edge and dying, okay? You don't. this part the very first time I did it I did it totally wrong so you jump it falls down once the very first time I played the game I had no idea that you could jump again and make it go down again and so I actually just jumped it down onto that ledge over there okay so if you go to the right that guy's gonna throw a rock at, at your head and there's items that you can get but you don't need them okay you just don't need them so there's no point in even going over there for this I mean, unless you're so terribly bad that you really need the armor. But the problem is you wouldn't get the armor until you can skip all the combat anyway. So, like, you just need enough items to get through the parts that require items. And, like, that's it. Okay, so here I've actually... I think this is the toughest fight in the game. So what we're... Oh, no, this isn't it. 
it's not till later that we get to the toughest fight in the game. Okay, so we're gonna go face the first troll. And the first troll with the lightstone is incredibly easy. Okay? It's incredibly easy. So there's no fear to be had here when we approach this troll. But, but again, like, this is one of the dangerous platforming parts. Like, you just don't want to miss that jump. You know, it's scary. It's scary in graybeard mode because you're like, Oh man, if I die, I'm gonna have to do everything all over again. So you really don't want to die in the platforming parts. So my general view here is just kind of have the lightstone ready. But all you do is as soon as you jump down, open up your screen, fire off the lightstone. That scares the troll. Go over, grab the key, grab your torch back, and then get out of there. And that's it. You never have to fight that guy. It's very simple. Very simple. You know, I'm not here to prove anything. I'm literally just showing you how to do this. Okay, so make this jump here and hope you don't die. I mean, hope you don't fall off the edge. Actually, when I did Greybeard mode for the first time, one time I fell off an edge, I missed a jump. But I got lucky because <laughs> it didn't kill me. Like, the fall... I don't know if there was a bug in the game that the fall damage didn't hurt me, but or maybe it just wasn't a far enough fall. Okay, so that opens up that. And then I don't... I don't quite remember what's beyond this door. I think it's the toughest fight in the game, yeah. So this is the toughest fight in the game right here. It's it's horrible. So this is where I expect to die if anywhere. Basically, a guy appears behind you. Alright, we got one down. Okay. So then this guy, you just have to fight, okay? Okay, that's it. That's the toughest fight in the game. I promise you, that is absolutely the toughest fight in the whole game. I did terribly there, as you can see. Like, I'm bleeding. I'm not bleeding out at this point, but, like, I took a lot more hits than you would want, and I promise you, that is absolutely the toughest fight in the game. That's the only part where you have to fight a bunch of guys that are ganged up on you. And so if you can make it through this part, the game is easy peasy from here on out. Okay, I kind of exaggerate. I kind of exaggerate. It's not easy peasy. But, it makes the game significantly... I mean, like, that that's the hardest part in the game, just because, like, there's three guys on you at once. But like I said, the two guys without weapons, it's just three hits, just get them in whenever you can. If you attack first, you'll be able to make it through it. The guy with the weapons, you've got to block and repost, okay? You, that's how you have to do him. But after... Okay, and also... I've tried running past those guys. You cannot run past them. Even if you get past them, you're going to end up dropping your torch. You won't be able to see anything, and then you'll get to this part. And if you miss this part, you will die. Okay? You'll just fall down and die. So you absolutely do not want to miss your torch there. Okay, that part there, you have to double jump. Like, as soon as you hit the wall, hit jump again, otherwise the guy will fall to his death. Okay? And there we go, we're to the first outdoor segment. So I've basically considered that the first act of the game. The game is sort of divided into three acts. That's the first one. Now this first outdoor section is not bad at all. And I'll explain a few things. We're going to skip some things. But, um... I'll say what's there. Just in case you're watching this as your first playthrough. To the right of us, there's a cave with a fight and a bonfire. It's not worth doing in Greybeard mode. You don't need the bonfires in Greybeard mode. And the fight is just another opportunity where you might get killed. And it's like, if we can avoid getting killed if possible, we want to do it. Okay? There's no point in taking chances where we don't need to when we're playing in Greybeard mode. Unless you're doing a playthrough where you're trying to prove something. Then I can understand doing something bizarre. Okay, so the first, the th the thing that we actually do want, the thing that we actually want to do while we're out here is there's a secret here. When you're standing right here at the edge, 
and you hold down, he'll climb down a ladder. And this is where we're going to get the Iron Helm. Now, if you play well, you don't need to get the Iron Helm at all, but in my opinion, the Iron Helm, you might as well have, at least if you're trying to do Greybeard mode for the first time, because what the Iron Helm is going to do is it gives you extra hits in the the fights that you do have to do but actually there's only i think there's only one fight left that we actually have to do in the game and there's a really cheap way to do that fight so the iron helm isn't really going to help us that much it's more of there to protect us in case we make mistakes later on so like it's an added piece of armor it will protect us if we make mistakes later on so i figure if you're doing graybeard mode you might as well grab the iron helm Okay, so this guy, you don't actually have to fight. He, he might hit me, but like, oh, I lost my torch just from being dumb. But once you get off the edge here, he's not going to follow you anymore. That was really sloppy, though. And I lost my torch on top of that, so... But, I mean, we can just use the meditation bead and we're fine. Or we can't, because we already used it. <laughs> so, dang it. This guy's going to die. Actually, you know what? I can use an herb. So I might have screwed up this playthrough just because of that. Oh well. I would say just fight that guy. You might as well just fight that guy. Now these two guys, they're not going to attack you, okay? You can I think you can appease them with something, but they just don't attack you, so you can just walk past them. I mean, as long as your sword is sheathed, you can just walk past them. Yeah, I really screwed up that guy. I would say just fight that guy. I've never, I've never made it past that guy without getting hurt. Okay, so this next part, as soon as you see the troll, as soon as you see him, just use your light stone and you're done. So I can see him. Go ahead and use that light stone. Hmm, actually, you know, you have to be a little closer, I guess. Go ahead and use that light stone. It blinds him, and you can just walk past him, and that's it. Now, you can get past both trolls without ever fighting them, but it's safer. It's safer with the light stone, and the light stone's easy to get. That's why I grab it. Now, for this ladder, I'm going to go past it, just grab the spear so I have it. We'll never actually need the spear because we're not going to fight anyone, but you might as well have it. And then we'll go ahead and go down. If you go too far to the left there, you're going to have to fight some guys. And, like, it's just not worth it uh, to fight those guys. And here we'll rest at this bonfire to heal our wounds that I... I might as well have just fought that guy. He wouldn't have even been that hard, so... But we'll fix our wounds here. And then, um, craft a new torch, because I left my torch on that guy too. Nothing about trying to get past that guy was worth it, I would say. So don't bother trying to get past that guy, just, just go ahead and fight him. Okay, so here's another trap part. As soon as you get on the second block, just roll to the right, and that's it. You know, your first playthrough, you're going to get killed there, inevitably, but, you know, on Greybeard mode, you should have that memorized. Now, here, you have to jump. If you don't jump, you're going to just fall down and die. There's some items to grab. Now, the most dangerous part left in the game is some of the platforming parts. Okay, that's going to be the absolute most dangerous things that we have to face is some of the platforming. So just be really careful and make sure you time your jumps correctly. But we're already about halfway through the game. Like, right now. And then, I do think we are going to have a fight. Yeah. Here is the shield guy. Okay? So just get ready to fight him. He's fairly easy. He doesn't actually have a weapon. He just has a shield. So you do have to uh, block and... So you do have to block and retaliate with him. If you just try to attack him, he, he will block with the shield. Okay, so the next two guys, we are going to run past. Alright? We're going to run past the next two guys. This guy's going to run away at first. 
then make this jump here and then we are just going to run past these two guys okay we're going to roll past them so just try to time it well so that you don't screw up and then just keep going to the left <laughs> it's okay that we dropped that we can just grab it later okay so i kind of went through uh, a door there i don't have my torch but we can do this part without the torch anyway basically i'm in a secret area right now so i'm just hitting the left button until i grab the sword chain so now i have the sword chain so the sword chain is just helpful to grab because uh you won't die with it so this part I'm t it's too bad that i left the torch over there but basically what you do here is those guys cannot go through this secret passage and i'll show the secret passage uh once i pick up the torch again but you can just attack them through it so that first guy will do that and then the second guy it's like he can't go through that door so you can keep just sort of going back and forth and attacking him and then he's just three hits and the fight's over both of them are just three hits so those guys aren't really that hard but okay so now you can see the secret passage and and basically it's just like you can fight these guys through that door they won't go through it so you're perfectly safe on the other side the whole time and you do have to fight those two guys because this lever you cannot activate it unless those guys are dead but they're not too bad because it's like you don't have to actually fight them i mean you don't have to you don't even have to worry and that unlocks this this ladder now to the left is just some items so we're going to go ahead and grab them and then the real way is to the right i mean the way to go is to the right and we're just going to go up a ladder Now up top this ladder to the right is an incredibly tough fight and I've lost my temper many a time on that fight. But you don't have to do that fight at all for Greybeard mode. All that's over there is a bonfire. You don't need to go over there. Okay, and so here we need to jump. Just make sure that you make it over otherwise. I've missed that jump. I have missed that jump, but I survived. There's a platform down there that we were at it didn't even hurt me to fall onto that platform the time that I missed it. But, I mean, still, I, it, it might have been a bug that I didn't take fall damage that particular time. Or maybe you never take fall damage if you happen to fall there. Alright, so here's a pretty tough part. We don't have to do any fighting, but you do need to time things very precisely. So if you're not careful, you will die. So there's going to be a guy throwing spears at us. Every time he throws a spear, you just duck. And duck just means you press the roll button without moving. That's it. Okay? So every time this guy throws a spear, you just duck. Okay? But make sure your weapon is sheathed. Okay? He's going to throw three spears at us. One. Two. Three. Now back away from him a little bit. You want him to jump at you if possible, but the main thing is just roll past him and move on. Okay, that was pretty bad. Okay, but it's a lot of times it's easier to get past him. So now we just have to run and he'll stop following after right there. He won't go any further than that. And so we're perfectly fine, okay? That's a tougher part. I will grant you, that is one of the tougher parts in the game. But, I mean, I even screwed up a lot more there than I normally do, and I still made it past it. Okay, right here. You need to have some herbs for this guy, okay? This guy's going to give you an item that's really going to help you out later on. So in this part, you just walk up to him, you give him some herbs, and that's it. I'm not sure how many you give him, but... He'll make the next part of the game very easy. You could also fight him for this, I guess, but fighting him would not be as easy as giving him the herbs, and I'm showing you how to do this as safely as possible. Like, this is not a challenge playthrough, this is a safe playthrough. So he gives you that Woad Kipu, or whatever it's called. Woad, maybe? I don't know. And then we 
got some dead bodies here. And then we're going to encounter some guys that are fighting. You don't have to worry about them at all. Okay. There might be something on this body. I don't know. Some herbs. Yeah, we need some herbs. But, like, we are through the really hard parts of the game. We are. As long as you just do what I'm, I show you to do, it'll be fine. So there's two guys fighting over there. Just Actually, they slowed down. Normally, I guess I went over too slowly. Normally, they'd still be fighting. Don't If you just don't go over there, you'll be fine. You don't have to deal with them if you don't go over there. Next up, you can get healed here if you're hurt, but my guy's not hurt. But I'll show you it anyway, just because it's kind of funny. Because you'll feel like something bad happened, but it didn't. So you hop here, and then just show this guy the Woad Kipu. And then he, like, throws his dagger at you. <laughs> but it actually heals you, okay? <laughs> so it's just kind of a funny thing. He didn't hurt you, he actually heals you. So if you if you have bleed damage at this point in the game, you can go to him for a heal, and you'll be fine. Now, the reason why we needed that Woad Kippu is actually for this part that's coming up. I'm gonna go ahead and light my torch. So just make sure your sword's sheathed so that these guys don't attack you on sight. And then there will be like a little sort of cutscene sequence where this guy kind of talks to you. But as soon as you have control of the game again, just go ahead and open up this and just show him the Woad Kipu. Fight's done. I, like my first three playthroughs of the game, I fought those guys. It's a tough fight, but you don't have to do it. Like, the Woad Kipu will just get you right through it. So now we're in a part with a little bit of dangerous platforming. So you just need to always watch where you're going to make sure you don't fall off a cliff. I mean, you'll kind of have the game memorized as you go along, but... Uh, you do need to be careful at all times, okay? Never get too confident in your abilities when you're playing this game. So, because, like, we wouldn't want to fall down right there. Now, let's see how many herbs we have. I've got six herbs, so I'm fine. And how many bones did I have? I have eight bones, so I'm fine. There's some herbs here if you need them. We'll skip that ladder for now. Because at, in this part, you need five herbs and five bones. So I get past these two guys without fighting them. So you just climb up this ladder, they run off, and we'll follow the guy to the right first. It doesn't matter what order you do these guys in. And then there's going to be a, a cliff, like, right here. So just jump across it. If you fall down, it won't kill you. But over here, there's, like, some more herbs, just in case you need them. Which we already had five, so we don't really need them. And you'll see that guy keeps sort of running to the right. So follow him, and then up this ladder. And you kind of know you need to go up the ladder, because you see those little rocks falling. But I mean, it's also one of the only places you can go. Now, see, he's sitting there waiting for an offering, and you know which offering he wants, because you'll see that those that string or whatever with those bones on it above him. That means he wants bones. So give him the bones. And then he'll give you the pristine shard. And whatever guy you talk to first gives you the pristine shard. And then the guy that you talk to after that um, gives you the other half of the thing. And which the two things together form this little cross thing. And this is a scary part here because... You gotta remember there's that fall off here. There's this cliff here. So you don't want to end up falling off this and getting hurt. I'm not sure if it'll kill you or not, but it's like, why take the chance? And you can go down there if you need more herbs, but there's no bones in this area. So if you get to this area and you don't have five bones, you have to you have to fight those guys. 
So preferably you have five bones when you get to this area. But if you have no herbs, there are five herbs in this area. But it's not hard to have five bones. I mean, I didn't go out of my way to get extra bones. Now, you know that this guy wants the herbs because there's some herbs hanging from the roof there. So you just give him the herbs. And he's going to give you the other half of the thing, which is going to form a new thing. The Wanderer's Totem. And then just make sure you grab your torch again. Alternatively, if you want to do some kind of skill playthrough, you could kill those guys, but I've never actually killed them. In every playthrough I've done, I've uh, just given them the items. But I mean, if you have something to prove, that's fine. But that's not what this guide is about. This guide is about just making it through. So then we just work our way to the left, and we're going to fight a boss. The boss is incredibly easy. So he pops up, and once you get control back of the game, open up your screen and use the Wanderer's Totem that you just received from those two guys. That's it. Fight's over. Done. Finished. So this kind of gets us to the third act of the game. The final act. But you, I mean, you'll see in this playthrough, I've made lots of mistakes. I take lots of damage, but I'm still doing fine. So over here, there's a bonfire. This is this is the last opportunity we're going to have to craft armor in the playthrough. So I'm just going to craft as much armor as I can, which is not going to be able to be much. But it's like, I think I'll probably be able to do it one time. Yeah, I'll only be able to do it once. You know, if you go out of your way for more items, you'll be able to craft more armor, but... We're not really going to need it anyway. But that's going to be your last opportunity to craft armor, so you might as well do it there. And then I believe to the left is just some items. But it's not enough items to craft any more armor, so it doesn't matter anyway. And I don't quite remember what's over this way, but as always, just be careful. Keep an eye out for what's in front of you, and you should be fine. There's one more tough guy that scares me every time, but I haven't ever had any problems getting past him, and it's the chain guy. So we'll see if he kills me this time around or not. But the chain guy is scary. So we can actually just put our torch away. He doesn't automatically put his torch away at this part like he normally does outside. Or maybe he did. So I'm just going to put it away. Now always keep your eye out to the left. When you get to the third part where you're outside right here, always keep your eye to the left because the final boss is going to keep showing up and throwing spears at you. And you don't want to get hit by them. He doesn't show up for a bit, but always keep your eye to the left and when he shows up, just roll. Here, just make the jump. It's scary every time. Believe me, it's always scary. This guy, wait for him to jump at you and then just run. He'll follow you for a bit, but he won't follow you for too far. Okay? No one follows you for too far. Now this part, just wait. So like, I don't have any control right now. Just wait, okay? Don't jump down there as soon as you can. Just wait. That's actually the final boss right there. Wait for both of these guys to run away. So if you wait for both of them to run away, you don't have to fight them. I mean, you don't have to fight that second guy at any rate. Okay, so now the final boss is going to start showing up. Or maybe not quite yet. We might have to do the chain first. But keep your eye out to the left. And if the boss shows up and throws a spear at you, get ready to dodge. Just dodge as soon as he shows up. 
So I can't remember if the chain guy's first or the boss starts showing up. Oh, this guy shows up. Yeah, chain guy shows up first. So this is chain guy. That's pretty bad. I'm gonna use the spear here. Wow, that was a waste of a spear. Okay, I'm gonna use the dagger there and just leave it, okay? We don't need the dagger anyway, so screw that. Chain guy won't come after us, but let me see if this can heal me again. That was really bad, okay? Just to be clear, I did incredibly bad there. But this just goes to show you that you can make it through this game. Okay, so now keep an eye to the left. Whenever the boss shows up, he's going to throw a spear at you, and you need to dodge as soon as he does. And he's going to do it three times. But yeah, he shows up, he throws a spear, just dodge and continue on. And he's going to do it a few more times. So just kind of time it where you start your roll. Actually, I think that's the last time, but we can grab the spear this time. So we'll have our spear, even though I ditched the dagger to get past the chain guy. Uh, we can we can still have this spear. We won't actually need it, though. And I don't know that he ever shows up again. But keep your eye to the left. Just keep your eye to the left, because like the last thing you want to do is have that guy kill you. Yeah, he does show up one more time. Oh, this guy, he he won't attack. If, as long as your short sword is sheathed, you just walk past him, and that's it. Okay? Like, this is how easy this game is. Now, here is the last hard part, and I think you can get killed here if you do it wrong, but I don't know exactly what you have to do. And so my general view is, as soon as the game starts making noise, you just start rolling, okay? But we're going to go through a cave that has cave-ins, and if you just start rolling, it seems to be fairly safe. And so this is actually the last part that I'm worried about. Worried about dying. And like, I did really badly on this playthrough compared to some of my other playthroughs, by my estimation. But yeah, my general view on the cave is as long as you just keep rolling, you, you should be fine. So as soon as the cave in noises start, I'm just gonna start rolling like a madman. Well, not that one. It has to be, like, more of a rumbly noise. See? Like, it's scary. It's gonna do it one more time. Okay, so that's it. That part scares me. I died there once when I was experimenting with it. If you just hold left, you will die. But, um... Rolling seems to keep you alive. So we're done, okay? There is no more challenging parts on this playthrough. But we can still grab this item. Well, we can't grab that item. I think it's the spear. Now the final boss. This is going to be incredibly easy. Okay? You're going to be shocked at how easy this is. Number one, he's going to be busy with those guys. So just run right past him. And we're playing in freaking graybeard mode. So we're not here to prove anything. And in graybeard mode, you get the same ending whether or not you kill the final boss so that's it we're done we did it and you'll see how easy that was the final boss just hold left as soon as you get to that screen just jump up he's not going to follow you and you're done now i am interested to see if murdering that guy at the beginning did anything different because i've never done that before so i think there, there's only three endings there's the good ending the bad ending and then the graybeard ending And you'll see, even though we didn't kill the final boss, we got, uh, uh, we got the blue sky. So, as far as I can tell, the only thing that actually affects the ending is whether or not you kill the final boss. 
and but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure and you know no one's really answered those questions on the forums yet so I think as soon as we pass this rock we're actually done playing the game yeah everything's automated from here like the game's over that's graybeard mode completed it's very doable just stay calm stay collected I made tons of mistakes on that playthrough like I made a lot of mistakes on that playthrough that was my worst playthrough of graybeard mode granted I've only actually played graybeard mode once before but that was by far my worst playthrough I made tons of mistakes and I still made it through just fine like you can do it too. I'm not some great gamer, you know. It just takes a little bit of practice. And like I showed you, at the beginning of the game, you have to do the combat. So you do need to learn how to fight those first few guys with the blocking and the reposting. But after that, every fight is skippable. All the hard fights, you can just roll past or skip past. There's some way to get past them. And so I'll just let you enjoy this ending here. Yeah, that's it. That it, It's very doable, and in my opinion, you have not completed this game until you have completed Greybeard mode. You absolutely have to complete Greybeard mode to consider yourself having completed this game. At a minimum. I mean, I guess some people would go out and be like, I've got to get all the achievements, or I've got to kill every single boss, or whatever. That's fine, too. I mean, like, if you want to do challenge runs, that's fine. But this walkthrough, this guide that I've created here, this is just to show you that you can do it and how to do it safely and easily okay like when I first found out about gray mo beard mode which is after I played the ga through the game twice and then died I was like oh boy I'm never doing gray beard mode the next day I tried gray beard mode and I got it okay like it just takes some practice some memorization and that's it and you can do it this is a great game and I want everyone to be able to play it and enjoy it. And then, of course, the game starts over. It stays in Greybeard mode until you restart the game. Which I would I mean, I would only play the game in Greybeard mode now. Anyway, this has been Jack Everett. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk at you later. Bye-bye.